Seijin Prefectural High School. This boy is feeling excited about finally becoming a high schooler. He reflects on how boring junior high was and hopes to make a fresh start and create more fun memories this time. He checks the class seating chart and sees he'll be sitting next to someone named Fury Yuko. He notices she's a girl. The protagonist imagines Fury Yuko to be a nice and dreamy classmate, introducing himself politely. But it's just his fantasy. Well, Fury Yuko in real life is a bit different from his fantasies. She has a tough appearance with rough blonde hair, a blazer, and looks uninterested. The protagonist approaches Fury Yuko and awkwardly introduces himself, mentioning that they're seatmates. He wonders about her rough looks. Fury gives him an unimpressed stare, simply saying, Huh? as she reacts coldly to his introduction. The boy is nervous and unsure how to respond. He looks awkward and tries to stay friendly. He realizes that Fury Yuko is not exactly what he imagined. He thinks to himself that the girl next to him is a Yankee. Fury Yuko looks unimpressed. Let me know if this matches your expectation or if you'd like any more tweaks. The class is clapping, but it seems the atmosphere is tense. Fury Yuko doesn't seem too impressed, responding shortly. The teacher asks her to say more, but she just answers, Fury Yuko falls asleep while the teacher calls out the next student, Taira Namito. The guy next to her feels uneasy about her strong personality. Fury Yuko is still half asleep but keeps glaring at the new student, Taira. He seems to think it's less stressful if she stays asleep. The guy sitting next to her peeks over and starts to think maybe Fury isn't as scary as he originally thought. Fury suddenly claps her hand loudly on the desk. It seems to have startled everyone around her. Fury Yuko gives an intense glare that makes everyone rethink their opinion. The intimidating vibe is back. Despite her expression, Fury Yuko thinks that Tyra looks good. There's some blush on her face. Tyra suddenly remembers he forgot his math book. He looks a bit panicked as he's digging through his bag. From behind, Fury calls out to him, suggesting he should go borrow one from another class. It seems like she's offering to help. Tyra nervously asks what Fury Yoko wants as she stands there looking a bit intimidating. Fury looks annoyed but offers Tyra her textbook to look at. He hesitates, saying he'll just borrow from a friend. Both sit at their desks, a bit flustered. Tyra seems nervous while Fury just looks mildly uninterested. The teacher is introduced. She is aware of Fury Yoko and mentions she needs special attention. The teacher seems determined not to lose to Fury. There are rumors about Fury being involved in fights and other bad behaviors. Tyra accidentally bumps into Fury. He quickly apologizes, but she seems to brush it off without much concern. Fury has a moment of hesitation before grabbing her pen, appearing a bit shy. The teacher is surprised by something, perhaps a softening in Fury's attitude. Tyra asks Fury what's up, and she seems confused by his sudden question. Tyra nervously compliments Fury's pencil case, feeling caught off guard by her reaction. Fury grabs something. It looks sudden, and she seems startled. Fury is gripping tightly, looking confused and slightly annoyed. She's definitely surprised. The guy is panicking, wondering if he said something wrong since Fury looks upset. The teacher suddenly announces a pop quiz, trying to be strict and maintain control of the class. The teacher orders them to move desks apart, complaining about students flirting. The main guy wishes they could stay seated together. Fury suddenly moves her desk. She doesn't seem happy about it and makes a sound of annoyance. Fury is pouting, clearly upset. She's not enjoying this new arrangement at all. The teacher seems to regret her decision, looking down and admitting she might have made a mistake. Tyra is about to move his desk back after class, looking relieved that it's finally over. Fury stops him, telling him to keep it there. Tyra is confused and asks if she means him. Fury says she forgot her book for the next class and wants to use his. Fury casually decides she might just sleep during the next class, and Tyra mentions it's classical Japanese. Fury gets up, humming to herself, and Tyra wonders why she didn't know about the next class. Fury asks Tyra about a word in the textbook, and he explains that it means wise. Fury seems confused by the different meanings. The page shows different possible meanings of the word. Tyra explains it could mean dependable or insolent, too. Fury continues counting, but this time she imagines Tyra. One Tyra. Two Tyras. She seems a bit flustered by her thoughts. Fury thinks for a moment and seems to consider the word. Fury then says that the word could describe Tyra as being dependable. Tyra gets nervous, thinking of the insolent meaning. Tyra talks about how he likes to count things to keep himself motivated. Fury yawns, obviously bored and still sleepy. Fury is counting something she likes. Kittens, going from one to two. She looks calm, focusing on the counting. Tyra and Fury get into a small argument. Fury leans over him, looking annoyed. The teacher tells them both to quiet down. Fury is wobbling and looking sleepy. Tyra notices, realizing she's already falling asleep. Fury starts to lean over, completely asleep, and Tyra looks a bit panicked, wondering what's happening. Fury is too close for Tyra's comfort. He's thinking how he's going to die because of the closeness. He is visibly stressed. Fury helps Tyra stand up, asking if he got injured. Tyra responds that something happened yesterday. Tyra explains to Fury why counting things helps him stay awake. Fury listens thoughtfully, but she seems a little confused. Tyra looks at Fury, asking if she got into a fight. Fury holds a bat, smiling a bit menacingly, and says, Something like that. Outside, Fury sighs and mutters that she doesn't get romance. 
Fury is lying on her bed while her sibling climbs on her. She looks a bit frustrated and says she's studying, though her sibling doesn't believe her. Fury is looking at her phone and finds the advice in her book too embarrassing to even try. She wonders if there's anything easier she could do. The phone screen shows lots of suggestions. Fury's eyes light up as she seems to have found something simple. Her sibling is curious about what she's looking at. The next day, Tyra greets Fury in the classroom. He says, Good morning, Fury-san, looking more relaxed around her. Fury smiles in response, simply saying, Yo. Tyra gets nervous, thinking he said something wrong, while Fury is just looking at him intently. He's worried she might get mad at him. Fury gets home, announcing, I'm home. Her sibling greets her excitedly, and Fury thinks it went well today. Her younger siblings are staring at her closely. Fury looks confused and asks, What's up? One of the siblings asks her if something nice happened. Fury's reaction is just silent surprise. Fury smiles and says she'll make some hotcakes. The kids cheer happily. Meanwhile, Tyra is at school, overthinking things. He's wondering if Fury hates him, looking all nervous and shivery. The next day, Fury sitting alone in class, her head down. The day after, Fury is again in the classroom, now resting her head on the desk. The next day again, Fury sits upright, looking annoyed. Tyra beside her wonders why she's still here. The teacher starts the class by saying they need to pick committee members. Tyra hopes for a solitary committee role, something easy and quiet. Fury also raises her hand, mimicking Tyra's action. Tyra is hoping that Fury's absence means less stress for him. Meanwhile, some classmates talk about how they found her intimidating back in junior high. The teacher notices Tyra and Fury raising their hands and asks if they volunteered. Tyra and Fury quickly backpedal, saying it was a mistake. Tyra is worried and hopes to avoid being on the same committee as Fury if possible. The following day, she's back again, slouched on her desk. The classmates around her look like they're trying to mind their own business. On the third day, Fury is back in her usual spot and Tyra looks uncomfortable. He wonders why she's constantly present now. The teacher says they need to choose committee members for different roles. He looks lazy and not very motivated to do it. Tyra thinks about how he doesn't want a committee role that's bothersome. He'd prefer something solitary and easy. The teacher asks if anyone wants to be on library duty. Tyra raises his hand and Fury also raises hers. They both try to back out quickly, raising their hands to say, My mistake! They really don't want this responsibility. The teacher notices and asks if they both raise their hands. Tyra and Fury both insist it was just a mistake. Tyra hopes to avoid being on the same committee as Fury if possible. He doesn't seem comfortable with the idea. Tyra is shocked at Fury's sudden confidence. He wonders where it came from, while Fury is confused about what she's supposed to do next. One of their classmates hands Tyra a clipboard, saying it's his turn. Tyra looks a bit nervous but takes it. Another classmate compliments Tyra, saying it was damn good. Tyra blushes, feeling proud but also slightly embarrassed by the praise. Fury calls out to Tyra from behind, simply saying, hey, while they sit in their seats. Tyra looks nervous as Fury asks about something in his hands. She asks if it's a DVD, and Tyra seems caught off guard. Tyra awkwardly explains that it's a documentary about animals, making it seem like watching it is lame. He's trying to downplay it, but Fury doesn't seem convinced. Fury looks interested and says she wants to watch it. Tyra is surprised, wondering why she's hooked on it now. Tyra hesitates, explaining that it's not even his DVD, and he can't just give it away. Fury, however, is determined, and Tyra is struggling to come up with an excuse. Tyra suddenly gets an idea. He remembers that Fury likes cute things and spots something that could help him. Tyra sees a kawaii item, possibly a cute cat sticker or accessory. He thinks this might be his way out, realizing that Fury is into cute stuff and hoping he can use it to distract her. The guy is trying to convince Fury-san that the DVD is about the law of the wild and full of rabbits getting eaten. He seems a bit desperate, hoping she'll lose interest. Fury-san looks completely lost in thought, staring off with a blank expression. Looks like she's processing what he said. She's clearly spaced out, and the guy is watching her, looking a bit worried. Fury-san just walks away, leaving the guy looking confused. She seems completely out of it. Fury-san and another character are in the lab, and she's mixing some chemicals. The teacher is panicking, yelling at her not to mix those. The guy feels guilty for setting Fury-san up with something so boring. She seems like she's not having a great time. Another student calls out to Furisan, handing her something. She looks disoriented, not fully aware. Furisan receives a DVD titled 200 Fluffy Cutie Animals. She looks at it, curious about what's inside. The guy is explaining that he found the DVD and thought she might like it. He's trying to play it cool, but it's obvious he went out of his way to get it. Furisan seems interested. The guy looks surprised and starts to offer it to her, but before he can finish, she says, I want it! Clearly excited. Tyra tries to make the DVD sound awful by saying it has scenes of rabbits getting mauled and eaten, hoping she'll lose interest. Fury looks shocked, her face frozen in disbelief. Fury just spaces out while Tyra looks a bit unsure about what to do next. Fury is mixing chemicals in class while a worried teacher yells at her not to mix them. Tyra watches Fury, thinking he feels bad for what he did to her. Fury looks tired and confused, and someone hands her something. It's a DVD titled 200 Fluffy Cutie Animals. Fury looks surprised. 
Tyra says he found the DVD and thought she might like it. He tells her he even went to the store to get it. Fury, without hesitation, tells Tyra she wants it, leaving him a bit startled. Tyra looks a bit hesitant, admitting he just found his phone. He offers to share his contact information. Furisan looks blank for a moment, thinking it's too late to ask now. Furisan smirks, saying, I see. Tyra wonders if she's mad and if she can see through his nervousness. Tyra checks his phone. There's an incoming message from Furisan, which surprises him. The message says, turn around. Tyra wonders if it's an errand or something else. Tyra turns around and sees Furisan peeking out from behind a wall. Furisan says she just wanted to send a message, nothing else. Tyra is a bit confused but responds, okay. Furisan is in the bath, wondering if Tyra will text her. Tyra is at dinner, considering sending her a message as well. Both are in bed, each thinking about messaging. Furisan wonders if she'll get a message, while Tyra decides not to send one, thinking it might be rude. Furisan lies awake, thinking, her heart racing. Tyra is fast asleep, not worried at all. It's the next day. Furisan looks annoyed and wobbles a bit, asking if she did something. Tyra seems frustrated. Tyra yawns as he walks into school. Then he spots something and seems surprised. He's thinking to himself, wondering if that's Furisan in front of him. Suddenly, Furisan is intimidating someone, and Tyra gets nervous seeing it. Furisan looks pretty scary as she deals with the person. Tyra is confused, thinking it doesn't look good no matter how he looks at it. The situation is revealed. Furisan is helping return a purse to its owner. Tyra realizes she's not as scary as she seems. The class is about to cook curry and everyone seems excited. Tyra is paired up with Furisan, and he's not thrilled about it. The classmates try to get Tyra to help deal with Furisan, but he doesn't want to get involved. Furisan is just lounging without much care. Tyra reluctantly asks Furisan to help. She sighs and eventually agrees. Furisan gets up, looking determined. Tyra thinks it's time to get things done. In the cooking class, Furisan's teammate comments on her skill at peeling vegetables while she looks a bit annoyed. Tyra looks surprised and compliments the peeled potatoes. His friend says they're just normal potatoes. Furisan is looking kind of envious, wishing she could peel potatoes that well. Someone else is confused, thinking they're looking at boiled eggs. Nope, they're just Furisan's super smooth potatoes. The group is in the kitchen working on the food. One of them compliments Furisan on her cooking skills. Sawamura points out that guys who can't cook aren't really popular with girls. Tyra gets a bit embarrassed. Furisan tells Tyra he doesn't need to be popular, kind of roasting him. They're looking at the pot with the cooking curry. Someone thinks it's looking pretty good. Sawamura and Mano are excited about the food and Furisan looks a bit annoyed at being rushed. Tyra feels embarrassed about his poorly cut veggies. Tyra feels bad that a lot of his badly cut vegetables ended up on Furisan's plate. He apologizes silently. Tyra compliments how perfectly the potatoes have been peeled, while Mano responds with a humble smile. Furisan looks frustrated, thinking about how she wishes she could be as skilled. Sawamura is surprised by how polished the potatoes look. He even mistakes them for boiled eggs. The group notices Furisan's cooking skills. Someone praises her for being good at cooking. Meanwhile, Tyra is struggling to peel properly and leaves a mess behind. Sawamura mentions that guys who can't cook aren't popular with the ladies, leaving Tyra a bit worried. Furisan tells Tyra he doesn't need to worry about being popular. She even raises a toast to never learning how to cook. Everyone's getting impatient, asking Furisan to hurry up. Tyra is embarrassed about his poorly cut veggies. Tyra apologizes to Furisan because his badly cut vegetables ended up in her portion of curry. Furisan asks Tyra which one he wants. He looks a bit confused, unsure what to choose. The guys in the back are smirking at the exchange, but Furisan seems to notice. Furisan steps in and confronts them, asking what's going on. Tyra looks surprised, and the other guys are taken aback. One of the guys looks nervous and apologizes, not knowing what they did wrong. Furisan and Tyra walk away. Furisan mentions it's time for PE class, and they need to change. Tyra looks back and asks, what about the bread? Furisan suggests coming back another time. Tyra realizes she's mad, feeling her frustration from her tone and expression. Furisan seems annoyed, mumbling that she wanted to feed the bread to him. Tyra looks tired as the boys prepare for basketball. He wonders if Furisan made it to class in time, while the teacher warns them not to bother the girls playing volleyball nearby. Furisan is stretching, and Tyra notices her, feeling a bit awkward. Focused on Furisan's perfect body, Tyra gets nervous. Tyra looks embarrassed and thinks he might have seen too much. Tyra is trying to play basketball but gets hurt. He's told to grab the ball more firmly. Furisan is watching Tyra, and he's feeling the pressure. He thinks he's bad at sports. Tyra feels like Furisan is staring at him because of his poor performance. Furisan has a determined look, and she thinks she wants to protect Tyra. Furisan makes a great move, jumping to hit the ball. Tyra watches Furisan, impressed by how good she is. The ball is coming towards Tyra, and he looks worried, realizing he needs to look out. Furisan blocks the ball just in time to protect Tyra. Tyra is in awe of her, feeling like she's so manly. Furisan asks if he's okay. Later, Tyra is carrying some stuff when he hears someone enter. Furisan shows up, greeting him casually. Tyra compliments her on her volleyball skills, asking if she played before. Furisan says it's just a hobby. Tyra admits he's not great at sports, and Furisan tells him it's fine not to be good at everything. 
Furisan says everyone has strengths and weaknesses and Tyra seems grateful for her words. Tyra thanks her and Furisan reassures him that it's okay to not force himself to be good at things he struggles with. The teacher is looking at Fury from the window, confused. The teacher notices Fury's focused aura and can't believe she's paying attention in class. He thinks she might be using her phone. The teacher approaches Fury, warning her she'll get in trouble if she's not studying. Fury is doodling something on her eraser. It has both her name and Tyra's name. The teacher looks stressed out, as if he doesn't know how to handle the situation. Fury is approached by a guy who tells her she needs to join a club because it's compulsory in their school. Fury doesn't seem that interested. Tyra mentions he can't join a club because he's got responsibilities at home with his siblings. The guy suggests sports since Tyra is pretty good at it. Fury suddenly looks interested and agrees to join the same club as Tyra. Tyra looks a bit surprised by her enthusiasm. Someone calls Tyra's name and he responds, looking a bit clueless. The guy mentions a fan club that Tyra joined. He suggests taking Fury along since the club is less strict. Fury immediately agrees, ending the scene with her casual, I'm on board response. Furisan and Tyra are walking together, talking about the club. Furi picked this club because it seemed relaxed. Tyra explains that there are only two members, him and another freshman. Fury asks if it's someone he knows from junior high. They arrive at the club room. The sign reads, Manga slash Anime Fan Club. Tyra looks excited. Fury looks unimpressed, with a gulp. Tyra notices her expression, thinking it's a face she's never made before. Fury comments that this seems like an otaku thing. Tyra quickly gets defensive, saying it's different. Tyra explains nervously that it's not a crazy group and you can just read whatever manga you want. Fury seems unsure but goes along. Suddenly, a new character, Okuta, bursts in announcing it's figurine appreciation time and asking everyone to keep it peaceful. Fury looks confused, her eye twitching at Okuta's dramatic entrance. Tyra introduces Fury to the group, saying she might join. Okuta seems surprised to see her there, questioning why a blonde maiden is present. Okuta whispers to Tyra, mentioning Fury's rumored misconduct. Tyra just tries to explain that the teacher asked him to make her a member. The club guy is passionately explaining how only those truly devoted to 2D anime belong in this club. Tyra feels a bit overwhelmed by it all. Tyra asks Fury if she knows the anime. She doesn't, but he shares that his sister loves it and they have lots of toys at home. The club guy shows a doll causing some confusion. People laugh and Tyra tries to explain that Fury has her reasons for being there. When asked about her favorite character, Fury confidently says, Dark Azuma. The club guy is thrilled by her answer. The club guy is all excited, praising Fury's choice. Tyra agrees, adding that Dark Azuma is a villain you can't help but root for. The club guy suddenly begs Fury to join, kneeling dramatically. Fury is just standing there, confused. In the club room, Fury seems uncomfortable, and Tyra tries to calm her. The club guy's strange behavior makes Fury think about leaving. The club guy offers Fury a vice president role, but she refuses, saying there's nothing in it for her. Desperate, he offers her special privileges involving Tyra, which leaves Fury bewildered. Fury leaves the club room, visibly annoyed. Fury asks if she can give any order she wants, and the guy enthusiastically agrees, leaving the others surprised. Tyra gets flustered as Fury seems to want to make him do things just for fun. The other club member tries to justify it. Fury orders Tyra to sit on the ground, making him confused and hesitant. Fury tells Tyra to sit next to her and he agrees, a bit nervous. Fury looks smug while Tyra seems lost, not quite understanding what's going on. The club is still new, so there's not much to do yet, they mostly just hang out. They start talking about genres they like. Fury says she likes adventure or comedy while the others are curious about her interests. Tyra and the other guy look shocked, but Fury tells them to laugh if they want. Fury admits she reads shujo manga, surprising the others since they thought she was into something tougher. Fury starts walking away, saying she's going home and pretending she never joined. Tyra follows, apologizing and offering to explain things to the teacher. The club leader has something planned now that there's a maiden in their ranks, implying an activity for Fury. Fury and Tyra both look confused at the guy's mysterious excitement. He enthusiastically suggests they do cosplay while showing an image of a magical girl outfit. Fury looks completely uninterested. Fury tells them she won't judge their hobbies but asks them not to force it onto her. Tyra looks a bit awkward. The guy in glasses is bowing on the ground, apologizing for his behavior. Fury threatens to hit him if he says anything stupid again. The guy in glasses is moved by her words, calling her affectionately. Fury seems mildly resigned. Fury looks irritated, telling the guy not to get cocky. He just seems amused by her reaction. The guy says something that gets Fury angry. She yells at him while Tyra just looks at her, noting that she seems to be nicer than he thought. The guy declares that he's totally behind shipping Fury and Tyra together, leaving them both baffled. Fury looks very serious, giving a warning to not tell Tyra anything funny, while someone nervously agrees. Fury blushes, denying that she's actually nice. The guy in glasses gives her an intense stare. Okuda drills his finger nervously, noting that Fury still seems scary. Fury opens it to see a catalog of maid outfits. Her face is unreadable. Okuda hands Fury a paper and thanks her for today, mentioning he'd like her to have it. Tyra blushes a little, admitting he likes maid outfits. Fury isn't having it, reminding him what she said about those flying punches. 
Okuda takes a bold step and grabs Fury's hand. Fury agrees to take just a look, but she looks unsure as Okuda looks triumphant. The blonde girl looks pretty annoyed while writing something down. She's clearly focused on whatever she's working on. She's written the names Taira Yuko and Furi Nanito. She seems to be thinking hard about it. She slams her hands and feet in frustration. Looks like she's really not happy about something. This is a girl named Maida Kaho from Class 1-3. She's narrating about a worry she's had recently. Kaho's worried about the girl sitting behind her, who she thinks looks like a delinquent. Kaho remembers some scary rumors about this blonde girl, and she feels uneasy that this girl ended up sitting right behind her. The blonde girl gives an eerie smile while looking at her phone, and Kaho gets scared, wondering why she's smiling. Kaho is even more creeped out, thinking that the blonde girl is watching something scary. But it turns out the blonde girl is actually just watching a video of a cute kitten. Kaho's confused, but still scared. Kaho glances towards the back of the classroom where the blonde girl is sitting, seemingly still worried about her. Taira is looking nervous. He notes that even though he's nervous around Furisan, he's seen them hang out occasionally. Taira seems shocked, like he's realized something strange, thinking, no way. Fury is grabbing Tyra by his collar, seemingly bossing him around. Maida thinks Fury must have found Tyra's weak spot and turned him into her slave. Fury is leaning in close to Maida, making her feel uneasy. Fury is staring, while Maida is scared and just wants to avoid Fury. Maeda makes up her mind to avoid Fury at all costs. Just then there's some clumsy movement and Maeda accidentally gets involved with Fury. Fury seems apologetic. Maeda tries to take responsibility for what happened, nervously attempting to smooth over the situation. Fury offers to switch items with Maeda, saying hers is basically new. Maeda is surprised and tells Fury it's really not necessary. They exchange items. There's an awkward moment, but it also shows a softer side of Fury. Fury asks Maida for her eraser back, and Maida is taken aback by Fury's gentle approach. She begins to think maybe Fury isn't as scary as she thought. Maida hands Fury the item, smiling and saying she'll bring a better one tomorrow. There's a bit of warmth now between them. The scene opens with the character giving an eraser to someone. The eraser has both their names written on it, which seems kind of important. They both look a little awkward, handing over the eraser. It's a bit of a tense moment. Do you like tyra -kun? It feels like a confession moment. Fury seems embarrassed. There's a thought bubble imagining Tyra. This situation is unexpected. She thinks that the confession is pure, like it's a really sweet and genuine moment. There's a small misunderstanding, but now it's clear that Maida wants to cheer Fury on. Fury seems a bit touched. She smiles and says thanks in response to the support. Maeda looks surprised, almost crying. She doesn't know how to react to the kind words. Maeda explains that she gets emotional easily, but Fury doesn't really get why. Fury hands Maeda a cat-themed handkerchief, telling her to wipe her tears. It's a sweet gesture, and Maeda thinks it's super nice. Maeda is in tears, and Fury asks her if she wants to go to the nurse's office. Maeda is lying in the nurse's office, while Fury sits beside her. Maeda looks tired, and Fury encourages her to rest. Fury, looking a bit hesitant, tells Maeda that she can call her by her first name if she wants. Maeda is a little surprised, but she says okay. She looks shy, but happy. Maeda calls her Yuko-chan, and Fury is taken aback but doesn't seem to mind. Maeda falls asleep, murmuring that she loves her. Fury seems relieved that Maeda has fallen asleep. Maeda wakes up and sees Fury still there. Fury reassures her that she looks scary, but is a good person. Maeda smiles brightly and hopes that Taira will someday understand how nice Fury is. Tyra notices how quickly Maida and Fury have become friends. He seems surprised, thinking there's something odd about it. Tyra imagines Maida and Fury as delinquent buddies together, and looks both confused and a bit worried. It's raining and Tyra realizes he forgot his umbrella. He stands there, kind of annoyed. Nakano offers Tyra to share his umbrella. They seem to know each other casually. They see Fury standing in the rain. She looks a bit off, maybe upset. Tyra notices her and asks what's wrong. Suddenly, Fury yells at Tyra to come under her umbrella. She's blushing hard and Tyra's surprised. Tyra is explaining to Nakano that Fury isn't his girlfriend, but she's scary, so he just can't say no to her. Nakano doesn't seem happy about Tyra ditching him for Fury, and he grumbles as they walk away. Now Tyra and Fury are walking under the umbrella. Fury awkwardly holds his hand and tries to take the umbrella, but she seems embarrassed. Tyra insists that he should hold the umbrella because it's his and he's taller. Fury gets even more flustered. Fury is blushing because Tyra's hand touched hers. Tyra thinks he's making everything awkward. They continue walking, both feeling awkward. Tyra wonders why Fury is going so far just to send him home. Tyra is thinking that maybe he should keep his distance from Furisan while sharing the umbrella. The rain is dripping onto Furisan's shoulder. It seems like Tyra didn't do a great job keeping her dry. Furisan looks visibly surprised as Tyra tries to adjust the umbrella to cover her better. They reach Furisan's home. She hands Tyra a towel, telling him to use it while he waits. Furisan tells Tyra that he got wet because of her, almost like she's feeling guilty. Tyra thanks her, feeling grateful, but Furisan dismisses it, saying there's no need. Furisan suddenly gives Tyra a mysterious smile, making him a bit nervous. Tyra thinks that Furisan might be remembering where he lives now, which scares him as he finds her unpredictability intimidating. Tyra notices that Fury is late for class again. 
Fury seems to be rushing in the kitchen. She says she overslept and asks for her lunch. Tyra wonders where Fury is. Someone mentions that Fury left early today. Fury arrives home looking tired, mentioning that she was told her brother had a fever. In class, Fury looks worn out and Tyra wonders if she was in a fight. A classmate greets Fury in the morning but she looks a bit distracted or tired. Tyra enters the classroom wearing glasses, looking different from his usual self. Tyra introduces himself to the class, revealing that he has poor eyesight and usually wears contacts. Fury seems overwhelmed by Tyra's new appearance, and Maida tries to keep her calm. Tyra casually mentions that he ran out of contacts, while Fury seems impressed, simply thinking, nice. Fury is staring intensely at Tyra, which makes him wonder if she's really that interested in glasses. Tyra jokes around and asks if Fury wants to try his glasses on, but quickly says he's kidding. Fury gets super embarrassed and bangs her hands on the desk, telling him no way she could do that. Tyra explains he can't see without his glasses and everything gets blurry. Fury wonders if that means he can't see her face at the moment. Someone from the back calls out Fury and Tyra for their passionate gazes, making them both blush. Fury thinks that it's not really about the glasses or how he normally looks, it's just different. Another student teaches Fury some weird phrases about glasses being gapmo, which she then repeats to Tyra, surprising everyone. Tyra returns and they talk about her needing to retake the exams. Fury tries to avoid studying but it looks like there's no escape. Fury looks at Tyra, not remembering his name. Meanwhile, Tyra is thinking about how their teacher wants them to be closer but he isn't sure about it. Tyra gets motivated, thinking, perhaps I can help her. He introduces himself confidently, but Fury calls him Tyra, in a bored tone. They're alone in the classroom. Fury is apologizing for keeping Tyra there, but he assures her it's no problem, glad he can get some review done. Tyra hands her some study questions, telling her to start solving them. Fury is clearly struggling. Fury is staring down, looking stressed, while Tyra glances at her. Tyra realizes he's never looked at Fury up close like this. Fury seems absorbed in her work, while Tyra thinks about it, intrigued. Fury seems lost in thought, adjusting her hair, while Tyra is visibly captivated by her expression. Fury suddenly reacts loudly, exclaiming she doesn't understand the question. Tyra's face twitches at her sudden outburst. Tyra congratulates Fury. She passed her exams. Fury looks at the results surprised and overjoyed saying, I passed. Tyra notices something written on the back of Fury's paper and flips it over. There's a cute little doodle of a cat on the page. Fury is super embarrassed as she tries to explain her doodle to Tyra. He thinks it's cute, and Fury blushes even harder, totally flustered. Fury's thinking about how she should thank Tyra for his help but doesn't really know what he likes. Meanwhile, Tyra seems curious as Fury calls his name. A friend offers Tyra some snacks, saying he doesn't like that flavor. Tyra takes them gratefully. Fury thanks Tyra for the snack he gave her, but she's a bit confused about why he suddenly gave it to her. We're at the supermarket now, seems like Fury has a plan to get something for Tyra. Fury looks a bit unsure, like she's contemplating something seriously. She spots some sets of snacks labeled Umaibu Set A and Set B. Seems like she's trying to decide. Fury's been standing there for a while now trying to decide. Someone else notices how long she's been there. Back in class, Fury is fidgeting nervously. She looks like she's hiding something in her bag, making some noise. Tyra notices she seems upset and decides it's best not to bother her. She suddenly calls out to Tyra, catching him off guard. He thinks he might be in trouble. She hands over a bag of umaibu to Tyra. He's surprised and asks if it's really for him. She explains that she heard he liked umaibu, so she got some for him. Tyra bows and thanks her, feeling genuinely grateful. He mentions how happy he is and she looks pleased. She smiles brightly, clearly glad to hear that Tyra appreciated her gesture. Tyra blushes and tries to say something more, but he gets too flustered. She tells him with a smile that if he ever needs help again, just ask. Tyra agrees, still blushing. They're having lunch and Yuko suggests that her friend should try smiling more. Yuko's friend smiles brightly, adding that smiling is cuter and that Tyra would probably like it too. Yuko agrees, though she seems unsure. Yuko tries smiling, but it comes off really forced. She asks her friend to hold on a bit, seemingly not happy with the result. Yuko's friend points out that Yuko's smile looks a bit stiff and wonders if it was that bad. She figures consciously making a smile might be tough for Yuko. The friend is determined and suggests they go practice smiling. Tyra sees them from afar and notices them having fun, but he's not sure what they are doing. Tyra keeps watching, completely confused. He sees Yuko and her friend laughing together and thinks to himself, Seriously, what are they doing? It seems they have a lot of things to discuss or even to fight for. The teacher announces that Yuko and Tyra are on duty together the next day. Yuko looks startled but kind of excited about the idea of being paired with Tyra. Yuko reacts internally, repeating the idea of duties together with Tyra. She's clearly flustered and nervous but in a positive way. Yuko is preparing something in the kitchen while thinking about her duties with Tyra. It seems like she's trying to distract herself but her mind keeps going back to it. 
Yuko is in bed already looking sleepy even though it's only 7 a.m., Tyra points it out. She feels a bit nervous thinking about her duties with Tyra. Yuko arrives at school, but the gate is still locked. She realizes she's too early and it's not open yet. Yuko notices someone with her notebook and demands it back. The person apologizes immediately and hands it over. Tyra follows Yuko out of the room. Some classmates watch and whisper that Yuko seems scary and they wouldn't want to get involved with her. Tyra suggests splitting the task of getting materials from the staff room, but Yuko offers to go alone. She thinks Tyra might be too scared to work with her. A couple of Tyra's classmates watch him. Their expressions show they're curious or worried about his involvement with Yuko. Yuko and Tyra find the boxes they need in the storage room. They comment on how big they are. Yuko offers to carry a box, but Tyra quickly insists that he'll do it, saying he can't let a girl carry something heavy. Yuko is touched by his gesture. Tyra tries to lift the box, but it's clearly heavier than he expected. He struggles with it while Yuko watches. Tyra still struggles with the heavy box, and you can see him getting tired. It's a bit awkward, but he keeps trying. Fury looks at Tyra struggling with the box and wonders if maybe he should be honest about needing help. She finally offers to carry half. They are working together to put everything away. Tyra is trying his best but clearly feeling a bit defeated. Fury keeps an eye on Tyra as he struggles. Tyra looks focused, trying to get it done without much fuss. Tyra's writing something on the board and Fury is just trying to stay calm, thinking she could do this every day without issue. They spot a cat and it catches Fury's attention immediately. She thinks it's a nice day and the cat seems curious about them. Tyra picks up the cat. It's super cute and Tyra looks really happy holding it. He asks if the cat might be lost. Fury is getting flustered as she watches Tyra with the cat. She's feeling a little jealous because Tyra and the cat look so happy. Tyra is absolutely in love with the cat, hugging it tightly. He thinks it's so cute that it's making him excited. Fury watches, a bit unsure, telling Tyra to hurry up. The cat reacts, seemingly startled. Tyra suggests that maybe Fury scared the cat. He asks her to put her hand forward, ready to show her how to pet it. Fury looks surprised and flustered, clearly embarrassed. Tyra is holding the cat, smiling happily. He tells Fury, you did it, while Fury's hand is on top of Tyra's hand holding the cat. The cat brushes against Fury's leg and Tyra notices it, slightly surprised. Fury is excited about the fluffy cat and Tyra notices how well the cat is interacting with her, mentioning that it seems to like her too. Tyra looks back, a bit flushed, while Fury seems focused on the cat with hearts floating around her. Fury asks Tyra to hold the cat properly as she prepares to take a photo, making Tyra a little confused, but he agrees. Tyra holds the cat up in a bit of a goofy manner, the cat looking less than impressed. Tyra asks if he might be in the way of the photo, but Fury bluntly tells him, no, as she continues taking pictures. Fury thanks the cat, seemingly relieved after taking the photos. Fury is back at her desk looking determined about something, while some students seem to be talking about her in the background. The classmates are talking about Fury-san, saying she looks angry and scary today. She overhears them and looks annoyed. Fury-san stayed up all night looking at Tyra's photo. She's sleepy and not in a good mood. She thinks Tyra and the kitty are both cute. Tyra notices Fury-san looks really unhappy today. He wonders if something bad happened. Tyra seems concerned and says something, but Furisan is too sleepy to react properly. Tyra nervously tries to distract her by showing a photo of a cat. He asks if she likes cats or maybe rabbits more. Tyra says it's a stray cat that lives in his neighborhood. He asks if she feels better. She just says, cute. Tyra asks if she lacked sleep because of an interesting TV program. She just replies, yeah, while still being sleepy. Furisan tries to stay awake, but she's clearly struggling. Tyra notices she's fighting sleep. The teacher announces it's time to start class. Tyra notices something is up with Furisan, and she's startled by the teacher's voice. Furisan falls asleep anyway, and Tyra tries to wake her for the next class. The narration mentions she ended up falling asleep after all. It's raining, and Fury is out with an umbrella. She hears a meow nearby. Fury spots a cat. She tells it it'll catch a cold if it stays like that. Fury decides to let the cat stay under her umbrella until tomorrow. Fury's feeling sick now, probably from the rain. She's in bed with a headache. Tyra notices Fury's absence at school. He's relieved she's only sick with a cold. Tyra sits alone in class, lost in thought. Tyra is looking out the window, saying today's got a nice view. Tyra talks to another classmate, Yoshino Sensei. He learns Fury's house isn't too far. Tyra thinks about visiting Fury's house to check on her. Tyra volunteers to go to Fury's house himself. Sensei starts crying, touched by Tyra's sincerity. Okuda-kun comes into the room and asks if Furisan is there. Turns out she's sick. Okudakun brought some manga for Furisan but says it can wait. He thinks she and someone else are getting along well. Tyra decides to take some class printouts to Furisan. He asks Okudakun if he wants to join. Okudakun writes a note to cheer up Furisan and sends Tyra on his way. Tyra arrives at the area, a bit unsure of where exactly Furisan lives. He seems to wish Okuda had joined. He finds a neighbor and asks for directions. She realizes he must be here for Yuko since she's sick. The neighbor gives Tyra some stuff to take to Yuko as well. Everyone's worried about her cold. Tyra is given a bunch of things from the neighbors. He's a bit surprised by how much stuff there is. 
Tyra finally heads towards Fury-san's place, following the directions he got. Tyra is trying to find Fury's house. He looks a bit lost while a little kid rides by on a bike. Tyra is still figuring out the directions. Tyra looks at a photo of Fury on his phone, feeling a little confused. Fury is in bed looking unwell. She's holding her forehead thinking about how she wants to see Tyra. Fury feels a bit better and thinks maybe she can go to school. She hears some noise and wonders what's happening. Tyra arrives at Fury's house with a bag in hand, calling out to her. Fury looks quite tired. Tyra tells her he brought the class printouts and something she asked for. Fury is shocked, almost flustered. Fury can't believe she actually got to see Tyra. She looks overwhelmed but happy. Tyra is about to say something but Fury quickly tells him to hold on. Fury rushes back wrapped in a blanket, saying she doesn't usually look like this. She tries to explain, blushing and looking embarrassed. Tyra is about to leave, wishing Furi-san well. She's feeling conflicted and wants him to stay longer. She's shyly thinking about how to keep him around but doesn't know what to say. The little brother shows up, asking Tyra if he can play with him. Tyra agrees for a bit. Furi-san, still wrapped up in her blanket, is blushing and watching what's happening. The little brother wants Tyra to be his house. It's a cute, playful moment and Tyra plays along. Furi-san watches them playing, feeling peaceful and smiling gently. Tyra looks super serious while playing because Furi-san is watching, and he really doesn't want to mess up. Tyra is getting ready to leave. He thanks Furi-san for today, and she thanks him for playing with her brother. As Tyra leaves, the little brother doesn't want him to go and clings onto him, shouting, No! Tyra reassures the little brother that he'll come back again. The little brother looks at him, doubting a bit, but nods. Yuko is surprised and asks if it's really okay. Tyra just nods and says, Yeah, sure. Yuko is sitting with a blanket, checking her phone while her little brother sleeps beside her. Tyra asks if she's okay being up. Yuko just nods and mentions she's checking her fever. Yuko notices she got some messages. She checks her phone and sees messages from Tyra, Okuda, and someone else named Kaho. Yuko seems to struggle with her fever. She leans on the couch, reading Tyra's message, asking how she's feeling. She mutters she's fine, but Tyra's message message is worried, saying her temperature was way too high. The next day, Yuko arrives at school, looking a bit recovered. Her friend greets her and they chat about the messages from yesterday. Yuko gives a casual wave. Yuko and her friends are hanging out in class. Tyra gives her something to hold on to and they all seem cheerful. Another friend joins in with a greeting. Yuko smiles warmly, greeting everyone with a cheerful morning. Later, someone asks what Yuko did the day before. Yuko blushes, clearly flustered, and stammers that it was nothing important. Meanwhile, her friend saved something on her phone. In class, Yuko and Tyra are sitting quietly. Yuko seems focused, while Tyra keeps glancing at her, looking a bit thoughtful. Yuko looks deep in thought, chewing on her pen while Tyra is smiling softly watching her. Yuko and Tyra sit side by side in class, now a little bit closer than before, and today they look more comfortable together. 